power to improve lives transform communities and change futures your vote has the power to give visionaries the means to make a better world faster you have the power use it to decide which indian non-profits get 3 crore funding and support from google to make their vision a reality global impact awards a better world faster Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Rajan Anandan. I lead um, Google's business here in India. Uh, let me start by welcoming all of you. Um, we are thrilled to have the ten finalists uh, of uh, who've uh, who are, who've joined us this morning for the Global Impact Challenge, as well as our distinguished panel of judges. Um, I'm going to take a minute to introduce them. Anu Aga, former chairperson of Thermax, and now very active. Uh, in the social sector in india thank you anu for joining us uh, nikesh arora who's uh, uh, chief global business officer and senior vice president uh, of google thank you nikesh for being here jacqueline fuller jacqueline uh, leads uh, google giving and uh, her team is really the one that's been responsible for all of us being here today jacqueline thank you for being in india and joining us ram shriram ram uh, is a founding board member of google Uh, founder of Shapalo um, and on the uh, Stanford board. Thank you, Ram, for Ram's an India veteran. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. And finally, Jayant Singh. Uh, Jayant is the managing director of the Omidya Network here uh, in India. So uh, that's the uh, uh, panel of judges who we have today. I'm just going to take two minutes uh, to walk through what this is about and how the rest of the day is uh, going to flow, and then uh, we'll have the uh, event begin. As all of you know, we launched the um, Google Impact Challenge in in August of this year, uh, and the intent was to recognize um, NGOs in India that are leveraging technology in a very interesting way to have large scale impact, uh, starting in India but also over time uh, across the board. And we opened it up to all NGOs in India, and we were incredibly excited uh, by the response that we got. So we got over a thousand, actually several thousand. NGOs that actually sub submitted um, uh, that 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 came forward, and over a period of several months, we had about a hundred Googlers, and Googlers are Google team members, uh, who um, spent considerable time evaluating all the submissions that were sent uh, to pick ten uh, the ten finalists, and these are the ten finalists who are here today, and we are very very excited to have all of you here. And then the other thing that we did was we had a public voting. Uh, where we called for um, the public to actually vote on the NGO that they thought was the most interesting and the most deserving. We got 570,000 votes, um, which is quite spectacular, uh, and actually is what happens when you have 150 million Indians uh, on the internet. So we have a large uh, internet user population in India. Uh, and today, what we are going to do is uh, is going to be very, very interesting. We are going to have each of the 10. Um, NGOs make a pitch. Uh, it's a very short pitch, so hopefully you're all excited uh, about making your pitch. And after the pitches are done, we will have the uh, the distinguished panel of judges uh, select the top three uh, winners of the NGOs. So there'll be three winners who'll be selected by the panel of judges, and then we'll also have uh, the the NGO that was selected by over the half a million votes. Uh, that was submitted, and so in all, there'll be four four NGOs that will be selected today uh, as winners, and each of the each of the winners will get a grant of three crores each, um, as well as extensive mentoring uh, from the entire Google you know Google team, both here as well as around the world, to be able to scale your operations. So that's really what we've got uh, planned for the day. Uh, I want to welcome all of you again. Thank you for joining us. What I'm now going to do is hand it over to our MC. Cyrus, uh, Cyrus has been. Uh, come, come on up, Cyrus. Thank you. Thank you, Rajan. And also, I want to let you know: uh, every time Cyrus comes to an event, he gets better and better dressed. Better dressed. Cyrus, yeah, what I mean, tie? The tie, the suit. Yeah. What do you so think? So welcome, Cyrus. Over Thank you. Here. And Rajan gets the nicest. I get the mole. <laughs> you get the cleanest. Yeah, right. I get this. Yes. You get this. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you all are comfortable. 
Uh, just want a quick couple of announcements. Uh, there is a marriage happening here, but that's after our event. So if you've turned up for the wedding, which is going to happen after this event, I think it's in the wrong place. Three well dressed people have left. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to have a great morning. It's a wonderful time to be here. Welcome to the Google Impact Challenge, everyone. As you know, we are a very large country and with a very large population. We're over 1.2 billion people. There are lots of us. And I think we're doing fairly well. We've done fairly well in life also. And a lot of that has happened because of the innovation in technology and other wonderful innovations. But also, there are amazing NGOs out there doing unbelievable work. Uh, personally, I come from a family of NGO workers. My mom was an NGO worker for about 15 years. My sister was an NGO worker. I did my first ever stage performance for an NGO. It was for the inmates of Tihar Jail. At 15, I played an alcoholic. I thought I was typecast, but anyway, uh, it was great fun. That was a lot of fun to do. Uh, so in our own little way, everybody's sort of affected in many ways by how NGOs work. I'll tell you how I was affected. It's a, it's, it's a pointless story. It's going nowhere. If you want to take a call or use the loo or just chat or check other people out, this is a good time. Uh, because, uh, so for example, I was terrible at maths. Has anybody been terrible at maths here? Ms. Anu, I, I love you. Like, you. The jury member raising her hand has changed my image in society. It's a, yes, a Parsi trait. This is true. Uh, two Parsis have passed maths till now, I just want to say. So I was terrible at maths. I was awful. I'd see calendars, and I'd see numbers, and I'd freak out. My first girlfriend left me because I could never remember her number. This is a true story. We, we broke up at 98218, and she just walked out. It was awful. And if you're bad at math, then you're getting over that, and then in somewhere around the ninth or eighth standard, you get introduced to accounts, which makes math looks, look easy. I, consecutively failing all the time. And then in this drug rehabilitation center that my mom worked in for many, many years, they do amazing things with uh, people there. They'd have a football team. They were brilliant at it. They had theater groups. They also had something where some of the people who were there, who were the users, they were amazing at different things. Some were amazing chartered accountants. Some were amazing teachers. I got someone who was brilliant at accounts. And he became my tutor, he, me, th me and two more people were the ones he'd teach every afternoon. And he was the first person who sort of got us over this horrifying fear of accounts and numbers. And I finally gave my exam and I passed. I got a 42% on 100. That was the highest anyone scored in my family. My mother wept. The curtains were all drenched. Uh, so, and I sort of, he got me over my fear. And I think more than anything else, me passing was his happy moment, his achievement. I still bang into him once in a while, and he's doing fantastically. So in different ways, sort of NGOs and the work they're doing are helping and changing everyone's life. Since then, I've also been someone who really supports their wonderful work. So a huge round of applause for every one of you here. You people are... <laughs> salute. More than everyone else, actually. Now, the... Uh, it's the Google Impact Challenge here is to basically support Indian nonprofits who use technology to tackle the world's toughest problems. To give you guys a bit of a background about it, uh, basically, we receive thousands and thousands of applications from around India with a team of over 100 Googlers who work nonstop in reviewing in order to hone the list down to just 10 finalists who have joined us today. Now, at the end of today's event, three of our finalists will be selected by our wonderful panel of judges and receive a Global Impact Award, which is worth three crore rupees in funding. Three crore rupees, man. That is amazing, but even more than that, they'll have a lot of support from Google in order to make their vision a reality. We'll also be announcing who won the Fan Favorite Award. This one is huge. It's also in the form, yeah, somebody screamed. we a Fan Favorite Award. Yes. This is big, man. Come on, this is really exciting. This happened uh, during our 10-day voting period. We had an amazing 500,000 plus votes which came in from around the world. People are really supporting this one. Uh, before we move any further, a huge round of applause for our wonderful jury members. Anu Agat, ma'am, thank you so much for being here. Round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Nikesh Arora, Jacqueline Fuller. Ma'am, you have earned more good karma than anyone else. $50 million a year, I hear, in just wonderful work. Thank you so much for being here. Mr. Ram Sriram, and of course, Mr. Jain Sena. Thank you all so much for being here. A huge round of applause for our wonderful jury members who've given us their time, and of course, we'll be calling out the awards today. So without much ado, let me introduce you to the top 10 finalists who are one step closer to winning the Global Impact Challenge Award. 
list of finalists is Agatsya. Round of applause, please. Whistles are loud. Breakthrough. Yes. Chintan Environmental Research and Action Group. Digital Green. Going to School Fund. Janagra Center for Citizenship and Democracy. Pratham Books. Prayas Energy Group. Shelter Associates. And last but clearly not the least, Social Awareness Newer Alternatives. Now what's going to happen is we're going to hear from each one of these 10 finalists a one minute pitch for our jury members and then they will answer questions from our judges. Let's get started. Everybody's ready for this one? Okay, give them all your love. Our first speaker who would like to call on stage is Suzanne Singh from Pratham Books. Let's get to know a little bit more about them before she's here. Take a look. Nearly 50% of Indian fifth graders are currently reading at second grade level. This is partially due to the lack of reading material available in their native languages. With the Global Impact Award, we want to create an open source platform that allows for collaborative content creation. So we see a story originally written in Hindi, which could be translated by a teacher in Khasi, and the same story could be read by a child in a small village in Tamil Nadu on a tablet. In the next three years, this platform will create 20,000 new books in over 25 languages, which millions of children across the country will be able to read. Thank you, Google, for uh, recognizing the urgency and the importance of the work that we're doing uh, at Pratham Books. Uh, we are one of India's largest children's book publishers, and we've published about uh, 10 million books in the last decade. Yet, for a country with 300 million children, uh, this, is not, this is clearly not enough. We also believe that this is not a problem that a single organization can solve. It actually requires the collective abilities of a million minds. And our solution, therefore, is an open source collaborative platform that will create thousands of new stories for millions of new children, which will be available in multiple open digital formats and can be accessed on multiple devices. We also believe that this, and, and this will be in languages and contexts that are familiar to the children. We also believe that this will stimulate and spur the, the creation of more Indic language content on the web. There are thousands of organizations that need a continuous stream of, of content, and, and they will be able to get it from this, uh, from this platform. Stories are a very powerful resource for autonomous literacy development. And this platform is for our 300 million children and their brighter future. Thank you. Ma'am, your first question is from Anuaga. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, do you think the main problem is lack of books through email or whatever it is, or not having the habit of reading in India? Sure. So actually, it's the both two sides of the same coin. Children are not reading enough because mm -hmm. they're not exposed to enough books. And because there aren't enough books, they're not reading enough. So it's actually pretty much of, you know, two sides of the same coin. And one of the reasons mm -hmm. we believe that children are not reading enough is because the culture of reading doesn't exist. And it doesn't exist because there aren't, they aren't in environments that allow them to, to read, to pick up a book, to just kind of browse mm -hmm. through that. So it's two, you know, it's two parts of the same coin, really. Okay, and with e-books, how will you access the most deserving sure. who don't have access to it? Right. So in, in reading, we found that the offline online barrier is actually the most permeable and we've kind of experienced this in the work that we do. So we will, our platform or the platform that we create, build will create uh, thousands of new stories which will be available in, uh, you know, medium agnostic forms that can be read online, that can be, you know, uh, read on e-readers, that can be text to speech, that can be braille. But digital is not the universe. It also allows for print books. And there will be a range of frontline organizations that we foster and we currently work with, whether it's Teach for India, whether it's Akanksha, whether it's Pratham, that will take this content, convert it into print for now, if that's the only way to reach it, photocopy it and, uh, you know, and, and use it with the children. But at the point in time when India's ready, uh, you know, with, and we reach the digital tipping point, we'll have a storehouse of, of content in every language and in every context that is available. Your plans for translation into different... Right. 
So, uh, uh, so the way that we plan translation is that we want the books to be released in three layers. So there will be the text layer, there will be the image layer, and there will be the layout layer. And we will provide tools that will be able to translate uh, you know, the text into, into as many languages. And uh, we're expecting that the community, and we will allow multiple versions of the same translation. We, al we think that community will vote up which is the best translation. And communities will create their own collections of, uh, of works that they believe are best quality translation and, and works. Yes. Mr. Jain Sina. Suzanne, how will you build the skills on your team to be able to pull off uh, uh, this technology implementation? Right. So the team currently, you know, there are two parts to the team. There's the team that's uh, designed the vision for this, and that's the team that is in-house. But we have to create the team to build the platform and to take it on. And, you know, we'll have to hire people and create that, create that skill. But the team that's, you know, that's designed it and thought about it and created the vision for the platform is in-house. And it's really stemmed from the, last, from the work that we've done in the last decade. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Our next speaker uh, is Joylita Saldana from Janagra Center for Citizenship and Democracy. Before she's here on stage, let's get to know them a little bit more. Over 390 million Indians currently live in cities where there's a fundamental disconnect between civic agencies, the elected representatives, and the people that they represent. Over the next three years, with the Global Impact Award, Janagraha will reach out to 1.5 million users across different cities by building dynamic mobile and online reporting tools that would enable a direct flow of information from the citizens to the government. This would lead to empowerment of citizens, get them to participate more in the democracy, improve public services and improve their overall quality of life. Janagraha is committed to improving the, com the quality of life in our cities. Our mission is to improve the quality of citizenship and the quality of amenities and infrastructure in Indian cities. This ambition sees fruition in our project, I Change My City, a platform which enables citizens to engage with their governments, inform them about what the government is doing, and also engage in a more uh, interactive manner. So how does this translate on the ground? Citizens in Bangalore, that's our laboratory, have uh, reported over 6,000 complaints and resolved over 4,000. Our ambition is huge. We want to scale this all over India. We want to start with one big area and a mid-sized area. For us, technology is a huge enabler. What we pilot and experiment in Bangalore, we can then roll out to the rest of India. Thank you. Perfect time. Okay, uh, your first question is from Mr. Nikesh Arora. Okay. Um, can you talk to me about how do you plan to do this from a technology point of view? So we, uh, we have spatial mapping that we built out. We built out complaint management systems. We also do a lot of data analysis and use other analytical, analytical tools to create uh, dashboards and reports, which are ward-wise and constituency-wise. These are available online 24-7 for citizens and for governments to use. And uh, yeah, so that, that's how we start off with our uh, and how do you, Sorry. And how do you think you're going to get uh, 15 million people excited about interacting with these apps and this technology? So um, we don't need to reach out to everyone to improve our cities. We want one person to speak up from one neighborhood. Because if you see it, if one person complains about a pothole on his road, it's not just one person who is impacted. It's everyone who uses that road who is impacted. So we want one champion of change from one neighborhood to speak up and campaign for what he really wants in his neighborhood. Yes, Mr. Shriya. So have you looked at um, the work of Code for America? And, uh, and I think there's recently a Code for India organization yes. that's just formed to mobilize more uh, sort of freelance programmers to help with this at the local level? Yes, and we, I mean, we constantly engage volunteers from, and uh, software engineers from various 
uh, companies in Bangalore, given that we're in the Silicon Valley. But what is interesting for us is um, they come in and they help us with mobile apps or building out dashboards, building out uh, reports, or even just going out there and empowering people in their neighborhoods to come in and post a complaint on I Change My City and change the neighborhoods. So it's, it's a grassroots movement for us in, in that way, yes. How do you make sure that you're not just taking care of the problems of the rich who are going to be, I think, more online and more inclined to respond. So how do you make sure you're not just fixing potholes um, for the most empowered people? So we are looking at building out mobile applications, not just for smartphones, but we're also looking at USSD applications. So we're talking with an organization called Utopia, which builds out these USSD applications. We're looking at how people can use SMS-driven uh, applications. We're also setting up uh, computers in these Bangalore One centers, which are government-run uh, little places where people can come in and post complaints and talk about their problems. The other thing we do is also call these events called Janas Pandanas, where we bring together citizens, the elected representatives, and get them to engage on a common platform. So if a, if a person from a particular neighborhood has posted a complaint, we run through those complaints. The elected reps respond to them. The civic agencies talk about the time frames for resolution. And that way, everybody gets engaged. Everyone gets to connect with each other and with their government. Thank you, Jalita. Thank, Thank you. Next, I'd like to call on stage Mr. T. Krishnamurti from Agatsya. But before that, let's take a look at this video, which tells us a little bit more about what they do. Fortunately, in India, over 80% of kids lack access to experiential learning. Unlocking the creative potential of children and teachers across the world has been identified as one of the 10 most important challenges of the 21st century. With a Global Impact Award, Agastya would ensure that children have access to exciting science equipment and digital resources and interactive learning. Over the next three years, Tekla Bike is going to positively impact over 65,000 children, 3,000 teachers, and generate over a million exciting interactions across rural Karnataka. Hi, it's great to be here. Tekla Bike really represents the next logical step in a series of innovations that we have done to deliver creative hands-on learning to the remotest rural kids and teachers in India. It combines several levels of technology and appropriate technology to deliver the labs in a box and the laptop right at the doorstep of the schools, teacher training, empowering the teachers, the laptop provides the digital literacy and an online collaborative platform which creates a peer-to-peer -peer community for continuing learning and exchanging information amongst the teachers that we so create. It's very scalable because we've already put in a lot of infrastructure. We have the experience of running it, great people and management bandwidth, and working with the government which is so crucial to penetrate the school system. It's a very immersive, intensive program that is at once empowering to the teachers, and it seeks to unlock the creative potential of 65,000 kids, 3,000 teachers, creating a force multiplier effect across 1,620 schools with a million exposures. And as I said, very scalable to other states because we work in 13 states already and have the people to get it done. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Your first question is from Mr. Ram Sriram. So how, how do you know that you're being successful? How do you measure success uh, at the level of the, the children actually having absorbed the knowledge that you're trying to impart? Uh, it's a pretty intensive program because we will be doing 10 sessions with uh, a series of boxes, as I said, which have got all the implements in them covering the concepts. And then the, the, the teachers are empowered too, so that it's an inclusive program. It's not a parallel program. The school teachers are themselves empowered to do that. And therefore, they get tested at every point of time to ensure that they have absorbed the concepts. And, and you believe that the bike-based program is scalable? Indeed, it does, because it's one of the lowest cost options that you have to reach the remotest spots. We have done science centers. We have done mobile labs. This, is, this, this represents each exposure to a child, which is about a four or five hour interaction, will cost you less than 10 cents in US terms. So it's really scalable in terms of... Yes. Yes. 
Mr. Jensen. Can you explain the online aspect of your uh, science experiments? Yeah. If you do something, you need to leave a legacy which can be followed up by the teacher and the kids. So the online platform creates a collaborative community of these teachers, about 3,000 of them, and the kids who can then pull in their requirements, uh, they can share their experiences. They are also connected to the Agastya's huge uh, learning resources. Yes, ma'am. How do you ensure that the effects, um, both the knowledge but also just the inspiration um, that the kids get from the bike visit sustains over time? So once you kindle the curiosity and creativity of children through a catalyst mechanism, and then you have this online platform, and the teachers who are empowered, uh, you, you have an ongoing uh, you know, bubble effect, or bu bubbling effect rather, to make it happen, uh, that the curiosity level and the, uh, you know, the interactive uh, uh, session stays green in their mind and continues. But do you do anything with the teachers so that the teachers we know do. how to continue on? We do. Every single session has a teacher training program uh, to make sure that they absorb and they are facilitated to continue the work. Is there any impact study to show that students have improved in science? Absolutely. We have had uh, uh, third-party studies done uh, over the years, and uh, the fundamental things that we seek to create, namely uh, sparking curiosity, inspiring creativity, and instilling confidence, have all scored very high where there has been an Agastya intervention uh, as against those where there have not been Agastya intervention. Are you effective in reaching girls as well as boys? Absolutely. 50% of these uh, students that we reach are going to be girls. That's reaching them, but does your data show that the girls are as inspired and, and do better in science and math as the boys? Some of them are far more interested, and uh, in fact, uh, we, we are very inspired to see how they respond to the challenge, and they, they want to uh, pursue science. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Our next speaker is Rikin Gandhi from Digital Green Trust. Let's take a look at what wonderful work they do. Take a look. Percent of Indians work as farmers, but many face difficulty sustaining this livelihood. One major barrier they face is a lack of knowledge about locally relevant agricultural practices. Over the past four years, Digital Green has been helping farmers share these practices with one another. With a Global Impact Award, we will be able to scale our efforts and create a mobile knowledge exchange platform to enable farmers to train one another through video. In the next three years, we aim to reach 1 million farmers in 10,000 villages across India, helping them reduce costs and increase productivity. More than 53% of India's population works in agriculture, and yet most have difficulty sustaining their livelihoods. At Digital Green, we partner with NGOs and government agencies that work with rural communities to produce and share videos that are by farmers and for farmers to exchange practices that can boost their productivity. In the next two years, we plan to scale this approach to 10,000 villages and engage more than a million farmers by training 10,000 community knowledge workers, one in each village who will drive this approach. We propose to develop a mobile learning and accreditation platform built around videos to train these knowledge workers. Performance data will help stimulate a competition amongst experts and knowledge workers to learn and to contribute tips as well as videos of their own. We believe this has the potential of developing the first massively open online and offline courseware platform for grassroots level development. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gandhi. Your first question is from Mr. Jain Sinha. Uh, yes, how will you deliver videos in 10,000 villages when bandwidth is as scarce as it is in those locations? Right, so we currently work in 2,000 villages, and in each of the villages, we use a battery-operated mobile projector that is used by these community knowledge workers to screen videos primarily amongst women self-help groups. And, and how do you recruit and train your uh, knowledge workers? So the knowledge workers are existing intermediaries that are partners these government departments or NGOs already work with. And we're scaling up to 10,000 villages with the Ministry of Rural Development's National Rural Livelihood Mission, which already has these 10,000 facilitators who run various agricultural training programs at the village level. 
So do you pay the knowledge workers or is the government paying them? The government pays them. And in other places where we work with some private sector organizations as well as community organizations, in some cases these private or communities themselves actually pay for their services. And, and what type of a field organization do you have to build to be able to manage these 10,000 workers? So we work, uh, our team is comprised of 68 individuals with offices at various state capitals in Patna, Bhubaneswar, Bhopal, Hyderabad and the like. And our team serves as a trainer of trainers to work with our partners like this government ministry of rural development agency to actually build the capacity of the knowledge workers that already exist and build the capacity for them to train additional knowledge workers. Yes. Mr. Ram so with respect to online learning, unrelated to what you're trying to do, studies have shown that absorption of information through online learning is limited because people don't watch it to completion for example, videos. How do you know that the content is getting absorbed by your beneficiaries? So ours is a blended learning type of approach in which there are these knowledge workers at the village level who are facilitating these conversations using the videos online amongst a peer group of farmers. So it's not actually a full online course. It actually has human mediation, like a teaching assistant guiding farmers in this learning process. Our next question is from Mr. Arora. Ricky, talk to us about yourself. What inspired you to do this? Uh, I was inspired when I first came out to India seven years ago uh, to work with some friends who were starting up a biodiesel venture. And what I found was that there were some farmers who were very progressive and uh, seeing agriculture as something that could be prosperous for themselves and their families, while the vast majority of farmers were really trying to migrate away from agriculture. And what I really found was that there was an opportunity for bringing together knowledge sharing across these communities so more people could participate in seeing that agriculture doesn't need to be a vocation of last resort, but something that people can choose to do if they want to. Thank you. Very quickly, could, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, Anu. Very quickly, um, I thought one of the most interesting aspects is the farmer to farmer and that the data shows that they listen much more to someone like themselves. So could you comment quickly on that? Sure. The first two questions that we get when farmers watch these videos is not so much about the economics or return on investment of these practices, but rather what's the name of the person in the video and which village is he or she from. So that's really where this user generated content r creates this feeling amongst the communities that they can identify with the the folks that they watch on videos for themselves. Okay. Uh, has there been any impact study that productivity has increased? And if yes, by what percentage? Yes, yeah, so we've done some controlled trials that we've also published uh, peer-reviewed papers upon where we found two things. One, that we were able to improve the efficiency of these existing extension systems of government and NGOs by a factor of 10 times per rupee spent. And with respect to how these adoptions contribute to end impacts on productivity and consumption and ultimately income, we've seen that we've been able to increase incomes in some parts of Orissa where we've done some of these controls trials by a factor of about 30, 35 percent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Rikin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bharti Chaturvedi from Chintan Environmental Research and Action Group. Before she's here on stage, let's get to know a little bit more about them. The capital region of Delhi produces 8,000 metric tons of waste every single day. This waste lies there and rots and produces greenhouse gases. With a Global Impact Award, Chintan will develop an online marketplace and integrated mobile apps to address the growing problem of waste in Delhi. This will connect waste generators with waste recyclers to provide an environmentally and socially sustainable solution and curb pollution in India. In three years, Chintan will link 1,500 waste pickers with livelihoods. We'll reduce 500 tons of trash every single day, leading to heightened environmental protection and a healthier future for Indian families. Good morning. Uh, Chintan wants to use technology to transform how waste is handled. Right now, India has this huge waste crisis. Just 20% of our waste is recycled, and all the rest is poisoning our bodies and the planet. But Chintan also works with waste generators, including this hotel, and uh, recycles and handles over 21 tons of waste every single day, creating over 1,000 uh, jobs for waste pickers. But to transform the system, we have to leverage digital technologies in a whole new way. 
We propose an online marketplace that allows schools and colleges and homes to get online, ask for a recycler, and then make sure their waste doesn't get dumped. And our mobile apps will help monitor the waste, it's handling, it's recycling, and issue receipts. And our game will inspire responsible behavior. But this isn't about Chintan alone, because everything we develop, we're going to share with our robust waste networks internationally as well as in India, so that all of us can come together and clean up a country drowning under its own waste. Thank you, ma'am. Your first question is from Jacqueline Fuller. Can you explain a little bit more about the mechanism of this online marketplace? How exactly do you connect the waste pickers with the recycling opportunities? Well, what happens is uh, there are all these people now in gated communities and gated offices where municipalities are unable to reach. And also a lot of municipalities uh, are new and they also don't have the money to service uh, waste handling the way it is done in older, older places. So when you get online, you ask, just like you go for other things, you ask for a waste service. And we already know over 12,000 waste pickers whom we've mobilized and whose children we've uh, sent to school. And we will train initially 100 of them so that in particular areas, uh, which we have a sense of, and as you ask for a waste recycling service, the trained waste recycler, who will no longer be a waste picker, will show up and handle your waste. And what we're really trying to do is to make it easier for these people to link up. And we're obviously going to monitor that so that that waste continues to be handled at the highest legal standards. And can you say something about the game that you're um, proposing to develop? And, and games are very hard to create, games that yeah. actually people want to play and engage in. And so yeah. do you have any experience in that area? We don't have experiences in creating games, although we are creating apps for our own work, uh, even as we speak. But uh, what we've realized as players of games online ourselves is that uh, we're going to really f uh, focus on just a couple of things. One of them is that waste pickers matter and they are environmentalists. And so that, that enables you then to seek out those waste pickers and give your waste to them. And we're really depending on a lot of young people here who uh, volunteer with us and whom we have quite a lot of access to. So how will you train your waste pickers to use all of this technology? Well, um, let me start by telling you that last time on Eid, uh, I got an SMS from this 26-year-old waste picker who said he couldn't find me on Facebook and would I please find him. And why I'm telling you this is because waste pickers, whom we kind of think are illiterate, are actually very, very engaged with the digital medium and really want to be part of it. And truly, you know, um, populations that we think are marginal and illiterate, um, you don't need that kind of literacy to be digitally empowered as you need to write a really cogent paragraph. And uh, what we're doing, coupling this whole enthusiasm of the informal sector with our experience in training thousands of waste pickers to deliver really high quality services. Um, we're going to put that together and we are pretty convinced that this will work. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, Bharti. Thank you. All right, before we call our next wonderful speaker, I'll just take a one minute uh, stretch. It's a very famous thing I created in 42 countries known as the one minute stretch. Worked very heavily on that term. Okay, so I request you all, if you call, just get up, stretch a little bit. A lot of people don't know the person on their left. In some situations, that's not a bad thing, but here it's good. It's a good thing. I request you all to just place your hand on the person on your left shoulder and just say hello. Gentlemen at the back, sir, I said hand. I said hand. That is, that is the leg. That is the leg, sir. Excellent. Yeah. If you like someone's watch, now's a good time to take it. Right? Excellent, guys. Everybody stretch, relax. Uh, for some of us, these positions are dangerous. Uh, if you're all feeling good, we can have a nice sit down and proceed. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Our next speaker I would like to call on stage is Shantanu Dikshit from Prayas Energy Group. But before that, let's take a look at the wonderful work they do. India spends over 20,000 crore rupees on electricity distribution networks. But still the problem of load shedding and poor supply quality persists in Indian towns and villages. This is due to lack of accountability of electric companies. With the Global Impact Award, Prayas will deploy GPRS-enabled electricity supply monitors. This will record and publish minute-by-minute -minute data about supply quality. In next three years, 
will collect data from over 2000 locations across india consumers and regulators can use this publicly available evidence to demand greater accountability and good quality of supply from electricity companies good morning uh, electricity plays a very crucial role if india has to achieve uh, socio economic development our project is about using technology to improve accountability in this crucial sector uh, we hope to use this technology and this project to improve uh, fairness in electricity distribution uh, we'll do this by deploying electricity supply monitors all across india uh, we hope to generate about 2.5 billion data points per year through this process uh, prayas is a policy analysis and advocacy group for last 20 years we have been engaging extensively with policy processes and regulatory processes this coupled with our association and engagement with several civil society groups consumer groups will enable us to use this data effectively for demanding policy change and demanding greater regulatory attention to service quality in the electricity sector we hope that through this process we'll be able to make positive contribution to about 250 million indian households who need good quality electricity for improving their livelihood thank you thank you very much sir your first question is from mr nikesh arora so i understand you have a pilot going on right now yeah and how do you plan to scale this and do you believe your technology is your esm is robust enough that you can scale it yes currently those devices are we are in the testing phase and the initial experience is that you know it's very easily possible to scale those devices and actually there are commercially devices available but the cost is very high so our effort is to use this award to do bulk purchase of these devices bring down the cost and thereby make it available for large number of people and use crowdsourcing to scale it up so what's roughly the cost of a device the currently commercial available devices are around 17000 rupees per device but we hope to get it down to about 6000 to 7000 rupees per device so that's the kind of scaling down of cost we are expecting which will enable us to really deploy it at large number of locations yes sir. you know once you have the data about the poor supply of electricity which we all anecdotally know to be true yeah. what are citizens going to do about it and you know will utilities even be able to respond to improve the quality of supply i think definitely once the concrete data is available they will be forced to respond to it because today they hide behind lack of available data and there are regulatory commissions who are mandated to undertake public hearings every year as part of their tariff revision process so our idea is if consumers and civil society groups use this hardcore data and then go to the regulatory commission saying that you are asking me to increase my tariff but here is the data which shows that i don't get in the electricity so i think that will be the pressure point that the utilities will start responding to and that's how we feel that uh, you know the regulatory process will force them to improve their operations your next question is from mr ram shriram how do you deal with the problem of stealing which is one of the bigger problems in india with respect to stealing from transmission lines it doesn't address that problem here absolutely this problem this project is not about uh, addressing stealing of electricity this is about empowering consumers to document what is the quality of service that they are getting and based on that they will start demanding greater accountability of utilities which in turn will force utilities to also look at the issues of stealing but this project is directly about documenting what is the real state of service quality that consumers are experiencing even if they come to know about tnd loss or what the consumers are suffering are they in a position and do they have the will to serve them better i think they have all the resources which are required in terms of capital expenditure in terms of putting in uh, and upgrading the distribution and transmission networks but today there is no accountability you know they are not really forced to come out with what are the results of these investments so our project will ensure that these utilities will have to be accountable for the huge investments that they are making like we just saw you know just in the distribution sector utilities are investing 20000 crores per year yes ma'am is there any potential for there to be a revenue source for you all from this data like could you sell this to help bring in um more capital for your operations uh frankly speaking we are at this stage we are looking at making this data public and let the entire people know about what the current status is but it has a lot of scalable possibilities because going forward the device will also enable us to understand what is the usage pattern of different appliances what is the usage pattern of different households and that can give lot of inputs in terms of demand side management in terms of energy efficiency research so there are possibilities of scaling it up in that direction but current focus is on getting this data in public domain thank you very much sir thank you
<laughs> Our next wonderful speaker is S. Ganapati Raju from Social Awareness and New Alternatives. Let's get to know them a little better. Over 50% of Indian villages lack access to clean drinking water and toilets. These are breeding grounds for deadly diseases and create unsafe living environments. With a Global Impact Award, SANA will combine solar-powered micro-ionizing water purification and biodigesting technology to improve water and sanitation infrastructure for villagers. These green systems will purify local water sources to produce clean drinking water while the wastewater generated will power new community toilets. In three years, SANA would provide 54 million litres of clean drinking water and working bio-toilets for 10 villages in India, leading to improved health conditions for Indians across the country. Even as I speak, over 750,000 manual scavengers carry night soil on their head, a euphemism for human excreta. Nothing ravages human dignity more than having to drink dirty water and defecate out in the open. WHO says drinking water and sanitation go hand in hand. One without another is not even an option. Sana's integrated solution gives villages both toilets and taps. We use solar power as the villages have erratic power supply. We use biodigesting toilets as they do not need either septic tanks or sewage systems. The villagers are stakeholders. The panchayat charges a nominal fee for usage. The project is a source of skill development. We have a template in place. The byproduct of biogas is used to light up the toilet areas. Using this model, SANA has produced more than 2 million liters of water in the last year. Together, we can make an impact, an impact on the health, wealth, and dignity of villagers. Thank you. Thank you. Your first question is from Mr. Ram Shriram. So what makes your approach unique? Um, and then how do you think this can scale? And then address separately the issue of sanitation being sort of a, a huge issue in India. Absolutely. And doesn't it really require another level of intervention that no nonprofit can ever aspire to? Well, it's little drops that make the ocean. We're doing what we can. But I, I agree, what's unique and innovative about our approach is we look at water and sanitation in an integrated manner. We're producing clean water, there is wastewater that's generated, we're using that to power community toilets. The technology that we're using in the sanitation system is the only green sustainable technology that is available at the moment, which can be used in place of sewage systems, because conventionally, what happens is we use septic tanks with no secondary treatment process, and we're replacing one problem with another. Biodigesting toilets, on the other hand, do not need either a septic tank or sewage system. So they're green, they're, very, they're literally maintenance-free, they're very easy to install, it's all prefab, and the most important thing is the byproducts that arise, biogas and a certain amount of water, are both environment-friendly. We re reuse the biogas to light up the area, and the water that's generated, we use, pass it through a reed bed and use it for agriculture. As far as scaling up is concerned, I, I'm not delusional that I can solve this problem in three years or five years. We need thousands of organizations, thousands of uh, organizations like mine, bigger corporations to get into it. There's no doubt that the scale of the problem is huge. But after all, we have to start somewhere, and I'm very happy with the way we've grown. It's been very organic for us. So how is this going to be revenue sustainable, or are you going to charge for the clean water? Yes, yes. It is very important. Unless a project is revenue sustainable, it dies a natural death at the ideation stage itself. The panchayat is allowed to charge a nominal fee for the use, for the consumption of water and the maintenance of the bio-toilets every month. So that is one part of the revenue stream, but the other part, which is far more important, is every dollar that you invest in water and sanitation gives a $9 revenue stream. So for the three crores that you invest, you get 27 crores in increased productivity, reduced healthcare costs, and a more equitable society. <laughs> Do people actually uh, like using the facilities that you provide? I mean, one of the problems that's endemic with sanitation is that um, How do you get people to come out and the use it? may not actually like to use it. I, I, that is one of the problems, which is why we're working with the panchayats. We've already identified 20 villages. The panchayats are on board. And most importantly, the people we're working with are part of the solution. They're involved at every stage of the decision-making process, and they have a stake in the whole project. So 
That is how, through workshops and through communication modules that we do on the ground, we've managed to overcome that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next speaker I'd like to call on stage is Lisa Haidloff from Going to School Fund. Let's take a look at the wonderful work they are doing. With over 42% of children dropping out of secondary schools in India, and over 10 million young people entering India's economy every year without the business skills they need, it's clear our education system is failing both our children and our economy. With the Global Impact Award, Going to School will teach India's poorest children entrepreneurial skills through open source mobile games. These games will teach the importance of being on time, identifying a problem, all at a very low cost. Over the next three years, Going to School will reach over 320,000 children from underprivileged backgrounds by building 21 entrepreneurial skills games in four languages and ensuring we have an impact on India's economy for years to come. Children living in poverty in Bihar want to make a difference and they can change the status quo. In fact, 87.5% of girls in grade nine told us that they want to become entrepreneurs. The only problem is they're not sure how. We're creating 21 digital games, 21 intuitive real life experiences of skills using local stories and heroes to teach India's poorest children entrepreneurial skills at school. We'll begin in Bihar at 1,000 secondary schools that have computers. We'll train 2,000 teachers to use the games with 100,000 children. And every week we'll visit to make sure that we're on track. Then, building what children in Bihar tell us, we'll overhaul the games in multiple languages, release them on an open source portal and Google Play Store, enabling millions of children across India to learn entrepreneurial skills online, on computers, and on mobile phones. But what moves me the most is that by this time next year, 100,000 children in Bihar will learn the skills they need to change their lives. And every family, every community in which they walk and one day work will be changed forever. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Your first question is from Anuaga. Uh, is there any evidence that creative games create entrepreneurs? That's a good question. We've been running the program for two years now in 871 uh, secondary schools in Bihar, not through games, but through stories which have offline games. And we definitely have seen an increase in attendance of girls on Saturdays, which is when the program is run, which is when the school time. And also the fact that we do a baseline and endline survey. So in the beginning, kids identify the most important skill for becoming an entrepreneur in India is your social connections. And at the end of the, of the series, they've changed their mind to say it's innovative thinking. So the results each week that we're getting from kids actually have shown that games and stories can, can inspire kids to learn entrepreneurial skills. Have you created any entrepreneurs so far? Uh, no, not yet, because we've only been working in grade nine, this is our second year, so they should actually still be staying in school because they're uh, aged 12 to 14, and that's our goal, but most kids would actually drop out um, quite soon. So our hope is they stay in school to learn skills and then grow up to become entrepreneurs. And how do you plan to scale up? We plan to scale across Bihar. We're working right now in, in 871 uh, secondary schools. The government would actually like us to go across the state to all 2,900 schools. That's obviously dependent on computers in, in this case. We also have interest from Kerala and Karnataka that would like to teach entrepreneurial skills to kids at high school. They love the idea of digital. They said, okay, bring us something new. Let's look at interactive. Let's see how we do that. And then online, the, the portal is going to be in multiple languages. We'll start off in five languages. We can go up over 100. And we will communicate to schools and networks about using it with their kids. Um, as open source, as I understand, everyone can keep creating and making you know, new games. And from industry as well, I think we'd like to le learn from industry what are the kind of skills they want young people to learn, and we can keep creating those games. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Next question is from Mr. Yes, Jen. Yes, tell us about your team that's actually developing these games. So we've teamed up with a super group of IITians who have all the technology skills to be able to make this happen, and they've already built for us an amazing data capture portal and visualization software. They actually built the first game. So we're not the technology um, kids. They definitely are. Uh, they're the ones who know how to make this happen. But we have the, the power of stories. For years, for over 10 years now, we've created beautiful stories to teach children how they can change their lives. So we'll bring the art, the design, the research with kids. And they'll be the ones who are programming and making sure that's available. 
Do you see any gender distinctions in the work that you do in terms of whether girls or boys um, yes. participate? Yes, what's actually amazing is that girls do better. Um, so at grade nine, this is a time when um, as much as 70% of girls would drop out before grade 10. And our 12 best performing schools right now in Bihar are all girls' schools. And there's been huge demand from girls. We're supposed to just work with 100 kids, that in the girls' schools we have over 500, 700 girls that want to use the stories and learn skills. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next speaker is Pratima Joshi from Shelter Associates. Let's get to know them a little bit. In urban slums, lack of comprehensive data has led to cities providing community toilets en masse. 60% of the world's population that defecates in the open lives in India. With the Global Impact Award, we will engage with the local government and train communities to make digital maps using GIS, remote sensing, and mobile technologies, and locate each and every slum and all the defecation spots across the city of Sangli. Over the next three years, this will result in India's first open defecation-free city, impacting 40,000 people directly and indirectly the entire city of Sangli. Good afternoon. For the last 20 years, Shelter has tried to facilitate access to better housing and sanitation for the urban poor. To date, we've impacted more than 35,000 people directly with just our sanitation program. For the last 12 years, we worked successfully with the Sangli government on sanitation pilots, and currently we are working with them on a citywide housing project under the JNNURM. So we understand the ground realities pretty well. With this award, we hope to scale up our past efforts and move the city towards a vision of one home, one toilet, which we believe is the most sustainable. We would also like to explore a range of individual bio-toilet technologies and deploy solid waste management programs. In this model, at least 20% of the total cost will be borne by the beneficiaries to ensure their buy-in. Today, our dirty cities are brewing a crisis which impacts not just the poor, but 400 million urban Indians. We believe a project of this scale can impact the national urban sanitation policy and also create a blueprint for other cities to replicate across the country. Thank you, Pratima. Your first question is from Mr. Jayant Sinha. Yes, once you know where these sites are, what do you plan to do with them? What happens is when you know exactly what is the gaps in service delivery, then we First of all, you know, the data is collected with the people. So the first thing is we share the outcome, the analysis with the, with the people, with the councillors, with the city, and then we plan out a whole series of software uh, elements like, uh, you know, mobilizing communities through a whole series of sanitation workshops, health and hygiene workshops, and then we start directly making these inputs in terms of, you know, getting them to get an individual toilet in their homes. And you just the municipal authorities to actually intervene and provide the resources for uh, toilets in uh, these homes? Municipal authorities will be our third partners in any case in this entire process because they will be also monitoring this process very regularly with us. Yes, we do have municipal authorities who will contribute also to this process. We've had experiences even in Sangli in the past in the pilot projects where we raised 40%, the, the corporation gave in 40%, and the remaining 20% was pulled in by the people. So this was a process which went on a cost-sharing model, and we certainly expect that once this becomes popular, once every home has its toilet, you know, the municipalities, when they see that this works, they will be more amenable to making in those uh, inputs, because at the end of the day, even today, community toilets are fully funded by the municipal corporation. And what we have found is that if you provide a 12-seat community toilet, which costs about 15 lakhs for 100 families, you need the same amount to reach out to 100 families with individual toilets. And after that, the maintenance is zero, because you don't have to keep you know, uh, uh, putting in money and capital costs in maintenance of the community toilets, which anyway keep breaking down over a period so of time. So you're suggesting that the municipal authorities will actually pay for putting these toilets in people's homes? They have been. We have actually built more than 1,600 individual toilets, even you know, over the last eight years in the cities of Pune and Sangli. And they've all been working very, very well. In fact, they're all 
maintained, and they've been upgraded by the people. And in, in a lot of these models, we've gone for a cost-sharing model with the municipalities. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You advocate individual toilets as against community. What is your experience of community toilets? Community toilets, first of all, don't have a sense of ownership from the communities because it's been put in by the, uh, by the municipal corporation. So there's a very high incidence of vandalism and abuse. Secondly, the government machinery is not adequate to maintain it. So you find that over the four or five years, the whole thing just collapses. And it's so high on maintenance. If that is not maintained, communities cannot use them. So then they end up defecating in the open. Thank you, Pratima. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to call on stage Sonali Khan from Breakthrough, but before she's here, let's take a look at the work they do. Violence against women and girls in India is really widespread. A recent study shows that nearly 40% of women in India face some kind of physical or sexual violence. We at Breakthrough work towards changing attitudes and behavior towards gender-based violence. With the Global Impact Award, we will both create and scale up digital content to prevent violence against women and make it completely unacceptable. This digital hub will provide content and tools to individuals to launch anti-violence campaigns. Over the next three years, Breakthrough will reach over 5 million people with powerful campaigns to empower women across India. Why should you invest in Breakthrough? I'll tell you why. Because with this investment, we are going to create evidence-based solutions to end violence against women and impact policy. Your investment will create mobile and internet solutions to engage young people and enable action on the ground. Use technology to build accountability where we will audit law enforcers. Your investment will also create campaigns to connect catalysts, including champions from industry, entertainment, politics, and the community to drive this change. In India, through campaigns like Bel Bajau and the Nation Against Early Marriage, we are reaching millions, asking both women and men to step up and stop violence. Breaking the silence against violence has enabled women to demand services. We are open source. Belbaja has been replicated in China, Pakistan, Uganda, and Malaysia, and we are training NGOs in Bangladesh and Nepal to create their own campaigns at scale. So investing in breakthrough is investing in a safer world for women. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Your first question is from Jacqueline Fuller. What, what data do you have that shows that these digital solutions are more powerful than just offline solutions? The magic is actually marrying offline and online. We had a huge event on March 8th, on the day, International Day on Women, uh, on, women, uh, on Women, and what we saw through combining an offline event with online blast, which we call a social media storm, we, tr uh, we, uh, we uh, trended on Twitter, we had Joe Biden uh, actually uh, tweet us, we had millions of impression, and we, were, we created a critical mass to bring more and more people into the conversation, and we strongly believe that that's what's needed to shift these deep-rooted attitudes, more people talking about the issue, that will shift from, from knowledge to attitude to practice. So what's the relative mix of your emphasis between sort of direct services and trying to reduce actual violence against women and the advocacy side where you're trying to advocate for change, changed policies? We are not actually a service delivery organization. We really are an organization that's pushing demand and accountability because we are trying to bring down the deterrents that prevent women from accessing services. Setting up a police station doesn't mean women run to police stations. There are too many stigmas, and most time women have to keep quiet. So that's the barrier that we need to break down. And we realized when we ran the Belbajar campaign that after the campaign was out there in the public, our partners who deliver service reported 12 to 15 percent jump in requests for services and said that when they went into the urban slums around Lucknow, there was more receptiveness for their services. So we're really talking something different here. We really need to get women to believe that when they speak up, they're not going to be scoffed off and told to go home. And what's the role of men and boys in your outreach? 
Yes, in the last campaign, Belbajau, we really front and center the important role of men and boys. In the research that preceded the Belbajau campaign, we found a very significant uh, nuance. We saw that very few people actually intervene in cases of domestic violence, and interestingly, a large percentage of that were men and boys, even if they were fronting requests by women. And this really brought into us to think about how we can really bring, this, bring them into the solution and not look at them as perpetrators, but actually as positive role models as positive action, and I think that's why Bel Bajau really went viral the way it did. It got acceptance from both men and women. And in fact, today I'll just share a story with you that when we put out job applications for Breakthrough, we get a large number of men applying for that job. Though we say that we work on violence against women, 30% of Breakthrough staff is men, so we're really walking our talk there. Your next question is from Anu. Experience shows that about 90% of abuse is within the family. How will you deal with that? And do you have any plans for changing the mindset of the police uh, specifically? Uh. Actually, it's the biggest challenge. It's virtually the last bastion. It's very difficult to get in there and ch challenge the power equation between men and women. But both our campaigns, Bel Bajau and the Nation Against Early Marriage, is breaking this private-public divide. We are asking that it is not a private problem. Something that is at the scale of a pandemic, one out of every three women are suffering violence. Why are we saying that it's not a public affair? I think that is the mindset we really need to change. And that's why we want to scale. We are just tired of moving from village to village, district to district, and talking to you know, small groups. We want to work at scale, and I think the time is, uh, is really now. And that's why I think I'm very proud to be here, uh, actually with a mix of amazing NGOs, but fighting for, the, for, for, a, for, a, uh, for a gender issue. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sonali. All right, could we all have a huge round of applause for our top 10 finalists? Yes. Woo! They've done brilliantly well. Well done, guys. And now, while our jury members decide who the winners are, what we're going to do, we're going to take a 15-minute break where you all can relax, enjoy yourselves, and then come back quickly, and we will have the results for our Google Impact Challenge Awards. Everybody ready? Take a 15-minute break. Anybody wants to cuddle, I'm here. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. lives, transform communities, and change futures. Your vote has the power to give visionaries the means to make a better world faster. You have the power. Use it to decide which Indian nonprofits get 3 crore funding and support from Google to make their vision a reality. Global Impact Awards. A better world faster. Nearly 50% of Indian 5th graders are currently reading at second grade level. This is partially due to the lack of reading material available in their native languages. With the Global Impact Award, we want to create an open source platform that allows for collaborative content creation. So we see a story originally written in Hindi which could be translated by a teacher in Khasi and the same story could be read by a child in a small village in Tamil Nadu on a tablet. In the next three years, this platform will create 20,000 new books in over 25 languages, which millions of children across the country will be able to read. Over 390 million Indians currently live in cities where there's a fundamental disconnect 
between civic agencies, the elected representatives and the people that they represent. Over the next three years, with the Global Impact Award, Janagraha will reach out to 1.5 million users across different cities by building dynamic mobile and online reporting tools that would enable a direct flow of information from the citizens to the government. This would lead to empowerment of citizens, get them to participate more in the democracy, improve public services and improve their overall quality of life. Unfortunately in India, over 80% of kids lack access to experiential learning. Unlocking the creative potential of children and teachers across the world has been identified as one of the 10 most important challenges of the 21st century. With a Global Impact Award, Agastya would ensure that children have access to exciting science equipment and digital resources and interactive learning. Over the next three years, Tekla Bike is going to positively impact over 65,000 children, 3,000 teachers and generate over a million exciting interactions across rural Karnataka. Sixty percent of Indians work as farmers, but many face difficulty sustaining this livelihood. One major barrier they face is a lack of knowledge about locally relevant agricultural practices. Over the past four years, Digital Green has been helping farmers share these practices with one another. With a Global Impact Award, we will be able to scale our efforts and create a mobile knowledge exchange platform to enable farmers to train one another through video. In the next three years, we aim to reach 1 million farmers in 10,000 villages across India, helping them reduce costs and increase productivity. The national capital region of Delhi produces 8,000 metric tons of waste every single day. This waste lies there and rots and produces greenhouse gases. With a Global Impact Award, Chintan will develop an online marketplace and integrated mobile apps to address the growing problem of waste in Delhi. This will connect waste generators with waste recyclers to provide an environmentally and socially sustainable solution and curb pollution in India. In three years, Chintan will link 1,500 waste pickers with livelihoods. We'll reduce 500 tons of trash every single day, leading to heightened environmental protection and a healthier future for Indian families. Every year India spends over 20,000 crore rupees on electricity distribution networks. But still the problem of load shedding and poor supply quality persists in Indian towns and villages. This is due to lack of accountability of electric companies. With the Global Impact Award, Prayas will deploy GPRS-enabled electricity supply monitors. This will record and publish minute-by-minute minute data about supply quality. In the next three years, we will collect data from over 2,000 locations across India. Consumers and regulators can use this publicly available evidence to demand greater accountability and good quality of supply from electricity companies. Over 50% of Indian villages lack access to clean drinking water and toilets. These are breeding grounds for deadly diseases and create unsafe living environments. With a Global Impact Award, Sana will combine solar-powered micro-ionizing water purification and biodigesting technology to improve water and sanitation infrastructure for villagers. These green systems will purify local water sources to produce clean drinking water while the wastewater generated will power new community toilets. In three years, Sana would provide 54 million litres of clean drinking water and working bio-toilets for 10 billion villages in India, leading to improved health conditions for Indians across the country. With over 42% of children dropping out of secondary schools in India, and over 10 million young people entering India's economy every year without the business skills they need, it's clear our education system is failing both our children and our economy. With the Global Impact Award, going to school will teach India's poorest children entrepreneurial skills through open source mobile games. 
These games will teach the importance of being on time, identifying a problem, all at a very low cost. Over the next three years, Going to School will reach over 320,000 children from underprivileged backgrounds by building 21 entrepreneurial skills games in four languages and ensuring we have an impact on India's economy for years to come. In urban slums, lack of comprehensive data has led to cities providing community toilets en masse. 60% of the world's population that defecates in the open lives in India. With the Global Impact Award, we will engage with the local government and train communities to make digital maps using GIS, remote sensing and mobile technologies and locate each and every slum and all the defecation spots across the city of Sangli. Over the next three years, this will result in India's first open defecation-free city, impacting 40,000 people directly and indirectly the entire city of Sangli. Violence against women and girls in India is really widespread. A recent study shows that nearly 40% of women in India face some kind of physical or sexual violence. We at Breakthrough work towards changing attitudes and behavior towards gender-based violence. With the Global Impact Award, we will both create and scale up digital content to prevent violence against women and make it completely unacceptable. This digital hub will provide content and tools to individuals to launch anti-violence campaigns. Over the next three years, Breakthrough will reach over 5 million people with powerful campaigns to empower women across India. Violence against women and girls in India is really widespread. A recent study shows that nearly 40% of women in India face some... Your vote has power. Power to improve lives, transform communities and change futures. Your vote has the power to give visionaries the means to make a better world faster. You have the power. Use it to decide which Indian non-profits get 3 crore funding and support from Google to make their vision a reality. Global Impact Awards. A better world, faster. Nearly 50% of Indian 5th graders are currently reading at 2nd grade level. This is partially due to the lack of reading material available in their native languages. With the Global Impact Award, we want to create an open source platform that allows for collaborative content creation. So we see a story originally written in Hindi, which could be translated by a teacher in Khasi, and the same story could be read by a child in a small village in Tamil Nadu on a tablet. In the next three years, this platform will create 20,000 new books in over 25 languages, which millions of children across the country will be able to read. Over 390 million Indians currently live in cities where there's a fundamental disconnect between civic agencies, the elected representatives, and the people that they represent. Over the next three years, with the Global Impact Award, Janagraha will reach out to 1.5 million users across different cities by building dynamic mobile and online reporting tools that would enable a direct flow of information from the citizens to the government. This would lead to empowerment of citizens, get them to participate more in the democracy, improve public services and improve their overall quality of life. Unfortunately in India, over 80% of kids lack access to experiential learning. Unlocking the creative potential of children and teachers across the world has been identified as one of the 10 most important challenges of the 21st century. With a Global Impact Award, Agastya would ensure that children have access to exciting science equipment and digital resources and interactive learning. Over the next three years, Tekla Bike is going to positively impact over 65,000 children, 
3,000 teachers and generate over a million exciting interactions across rural Karnataka. Sixty percent of Indians work as farmers, but many face difficulties sustaining this livelihood. One major barrier they face is a lack of knowledge about locally relevant agricultural practices. Over the past four years, Digital Green has been helping farmers share these practices with one another. With a Global Impact Award, we will be able to scale our efforts and create a mobile knowledge exchange platform to enable farmers to train one another through video. In the next three years, we aim to reach 1 million farmers in 10,000 villages across India, helping them reduce costs and increase productivity. The National Capital Region of Delhi produces 8,000 metric tons of waste every single day. This waste lies there and rots and produces greenhouse gases. With a Global Impact Award, Chintan will develop an online marketplace and integrated mobile apps to address the growing problem of waste in Delhi. This will connect waste generators with waste recyclers to provide an environmentally and socially sustainable solution and curb pollution in India. In three years, Chintan will link 1,500 waste pickers with livelihoods. We'll reduce 500 tons of trash every single day, leading to heightened environmental protection and a healthier future for Indian families. Every year, India spends over 20,000 crore rupees on electricity distribution networks. But still, the problem of load shedding and poor supply quality persists in Indian towns and villages. This is due to lack of accountability of electric companies. With the Global Impact Award, Prayas will deploy GPRS-enabled electricity supply monitors. This will record and publish minute-by-minute -minute data about supply quality. In the next three years, we will collect data from over 2,000 locations across India. Consumers and regulators can use this publicly available evidence to demand greater accountability and good quality of supply from electricity companies. Over 50% of Indian villages lack access to clean drinking water and toilets. These are breeding grounds for deadly diseases and create unsafe living environments. With a Global Impact Award, SANA will combine solar-powered micro-ionizing water purification and biodigesting technology to improve water and sanitation infrastructure for villagers. These green systems will purify local water sources to produce clean drinking water while the wastewater generated will power new community toilets. In three years, SANA would provide 54 million litres of clean drinking water and working bio-toilets for 10 villages in India, leading to improved health conditions for Indians across the country. With over 42% of children dropping out of secondary schools in India, and over 10 million young people entering India's economy every year without the business skills they need, it's clear our education system is failing both our children and our economy. With the Global Impact Award, going to school will teach India's poorest children entrepreneurial skills through open source mobile games. These games will teach the importance of being on time, identifying a problem, all at a very low cost. Over the next three years, going to school will reach over 320,000 children from underprivileged backgrounds by building 21 entrepreneurial skills games in four languages and ensuring we have an impact on India's economy for years to come. In urban slums, lack of comprehensive data has led to cities providing community toilets en masse 60% of the world's population that defecates in the open lives in India. With the Global Impact Award, we will engage with the local government and train communities to make digital maps using GIS, remote sensing and mobile technologies and locate each and every slum and all the defecation spots across the city of Sangli. Over the next three years, this will result in India's first open defecation-free city, impacting 40,000 people directly and indirectly, the entire city of Sangli.
Violence against women and girls in India is really widespread. A recent study shows that nearly 40% of women in India face some kind of physical or sexual violence. We at Breakthrough work towards changing attitudes and behavior towards gender-based violence. With the Global Impact Award, we will both create and scale up digital content to prevent violence against women and make it completely unacceptable. This digital hub will provide content and tools to individuals to launch anti-violence campaigns. Over the next three years, Breakthrough will reach over 5 million people with powerful campaigns to empower women across India. Your vote has power. Power to improve lives, transform communities, and change futures. Your vote has the power to give visionaries the means to make a better world faster. You have the power. Use it to decide which Indian non-profits get 3 crore funding and support from Google to make their vision a reality. Global Impact Awards. A better world, faster. Nearly 50% of Indian fifth graders are currently reading at second grade level. This is partially due to the lack of reading material available in their native languages. With the Global Impact Award, we want to create an open source platform that allows for collaborative content creation. So we see a story originally written in Hindi, which could be translated by a teacher in Khasi, and the same story could be read by a child in a small village in Tamil Nadu on a tablet. In the next three years, this platform will create 20,000 new books in over 25 languages, which millions of children across the country will be able to read. Over 390 million Indians currently live in cities where there's a fundamental disconnect between civic agencies, the elected representatives, and the people that they represent. Over the next three years, with the Global Impact Award, Janagraha will reach out to 1.5 million users across different cities by building dynamic mobile and online reporting tools that would enable a direct flow of information from the citizens to the government. This would lead to empowerment of citizens, get them to participate more in the democracy, improve public services, and improve their overall quality of life. Ladies and gentlemen, I request you all to take your seats. Uh, so we'll be starting our show in just a second. Thank you. Ah, 
Ouais, comme ça. Ok, sir. Je vais vous demander, comment vous êtes, sir Ok. Donc, je vais juste passer le temps. Je vais vous donner un peu de temps. Ok, un peu d'applaudissements, s'il vous plaît. L'excitement est killing me. So before we have the results, could I ask you guys just to, what, what, how would you like the event? Just a few words, it would be amazing. Ma'am. Uh, you put us in a very difficult spot because all 10 were so good. So to select three was a tough job. I can imagine. I want to congratulate everyone. No, it was terrific and inspiring to see all of the hard work that you all have put into it and the kind of impact that you're having uh, in your communities and in India. Thank you for all your hard work. So Google has only done this in one other country, the UK. And when we came to India, we weren't sure exactly how it would work. But I want you to know that you all and the work that you've done is so inspiring and has in, so caught the attention of the country. We had more than 500,000 votes. We had more than a million people come to the site, unique people, and watch the videos. We had more than 1,000 applications, and we have more than 300 Googlers who have volunteered and have already been part of the process and who are all going to be eager volunteers to help carry out your projects as well. So congratulations on the, not only the work, the amazing work that you're doing, but the inspiration that you're bringing to the entire country. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah, I'd say the same things, plus one more thing, which is it is so inspiring, so passionate, the work that you guys all do. It was very tough to choose, but I do think that you will lead the way for many, many others to follow your example, uh, hopefully from the work that you're going to do on the ground with these uh, different activities that you've chosen. Well, um, I guess all my fellow judges here have shared their point of view. I think I can only echo everything they have said. We were all very inspired, and I think some of us were sitting in the room deliberating, but before that we were a little bit envious that we wish that we had these ideas when we were young or been able to get involved in such a wonderful way that you guys are doing. So I think we should start off by congratulating everybody who's in the room and all their passion and their hard work. And I know you guys are all waiting to see who the winners are, right? Um, I've been asked to now hold the applause till the end so we can announce the popular choice by the many people who voted, as well as the choice uh, that the judges have made uh, after a lot of uh, sort of tough choices were presented to us. So the fan favorite award, uh, which was also a favorite, favorite of all of us, is Sana. Okay. Wow. Okay. Now, clearly, none of you followed the instructions, <laughs> as well as the judges. Um, so we're going to try this one more time. Please don't clap this time, okay? <laughs> the fan favorite award is Sana. The other three winners chosen by the judges are, in no particular order, Janagra. <laughs> It's a good thing we're not trying to launch a spaceship or something. <laughs> um, Digital Green and Agastya. Okay, so all these, all these four fantastic efforts are going to get three crores each and a lot of Google help and mentorship. So congratulations to all of you. Um, now, hold, hold your applause for a second. Um, just give us one, one more minute. And uh, as you know, as Jacqueline mentioned, we've had thousands of applications and lots of Googlers who spend time validating and doing due diligence on all these people because we wanted to make sure once we give them the award, their efforts are going to be able to scale. So we particularly, as judges, didn't feel that there was so much of a difference between these four efforts and those six that the remaining six people should be 
sent home empty-handed. So the decision is that we're going to give one and a half crores each to the remaining six teams as well. Whoa! So, in this way, all of you can continue your wonderful efforts and you're continuing to follow your passion and your great ideas. So with that, thank you very much, everyone. Request any who have the press to take their photographs right now. Thank you all so much. Thank you all very much and congratulations. Let's have a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for our jury members, for our winners, and for all of you here. Let's have a standing ovation. That's amazing. Everyone has won. More good news follows. We've got a wonderful, beautiful lunch laid out in the lawns for each and every one of you. And of course, for our wonderful people from the press, Jacqueline and Mr. Rajan are available for any questions or one-on-ones that you'd like to enjoy with the media. Uh, they'll be here in just a moment, so you can enjoy that. And uh, thank you all so much for being here, and congratulations. Thank you.